Today we're going to be looking at Caden Live, which I'm not sure if I've ever done a tutorial on. And main reason is because the majority of it is pretty straightforward. It's a pretty easy to use program. I mean, years ago I did videos on Scenelorella, which is a bit more uh, confusing in some ways. Um, but Caden Live, for the most part, I've found that there's no need for me to do a tutorial because everything's pretty straightforward. I also like to note before we get started that um, I am running Caden Live version 0.8.2. Now, that's probably not what, at the time of making this video, is in your default repositories. It's probably going to be 0 0.7 something. I get a lot of people telling me Caden Live crashes on them all the time. And yeah, when I was using version 0 0.7, which also doesn't have nearly as many features as this version of Caden Live, um, yeah, it used to crash on me all the time. This version of Caden Live, uh, I'll admit, every time I, the first time I open it up, each time I boot my computer and I import a video, it crashes right away. I click restart and then I tend to have no crash problems after that. It's still, it's not even at version one yet. So, I mean, you got to expect something like that. Um, also, I very rarely tell people to download things outside of default repositories for security reasons. You should try to use your package manager with the default repositories as much as you can. But there are two programs that I use that evolve so fast that I have to have the newest version because there's so many new features and stability issues when it comes to Caden Live anyway, uh, that I, both these programs, which are Blender and Caden Live, I get from the websites just to get the newest version. Caden Live will give you um, repositories you can add to your package manager and Blender, I just download the binaries. I don't normally recommend that, but I always say if you need the newest version for either stability, which usually most programs, the older versions are more stable, um, or for features, which Caden Live is both stability and features is why I get the newest version from the website. So I don't normally recommend doing that, but I recommend getting the newest version off the website for Caden Live and also Blender. So anyway, today we're going to be taking a short little video clip of me breaking apart this old piece of furniture and throwing into pieces of it into a fire that isn't really there. We're going to superimpose or screen uh, overlay the uh, flame video. So I'm going to click uh, add clip here and um, refresh this. There you go. Sometimes you got to refresh it if you have new videos. It doesn't or new files. It doesn't always recognize the new files until you refresh or move in and out of a folder. And I've got uh, Two videos here, two AVIs, one called Fire and one called Firewood. I'm going to open those up. The one Firewood is me chopping the wood, which I'll put on this uh, video uh, track here. And I'm also going to grab the one of the Fire, which is just a um, some stock footage I got offline of some fire burning. Now, lots of times when you're superimposing stuff, you're going to be using what's called a blue screen or a green screen uh, or color keying, where you're going to choose a certain color and remove it, which is kind of what we're doing here, but we're going with black. And the reason for that is when you're filming fire, you're going to, if, if you're filming it yourself, you're, and if you get stock footage, you'll notice that it's always on a black background. That's because flames are light and they have many different colors in them. So if you used a blue background, it'd be very hard to remove the background and still keep the flame. Because um, even in this little clip, if you look at it closely, there is a little bit of purple in the flame at points. So... Um, so that being said, that's why you'll see flames uh, on a black background. Um, and this is real easy to overlay stuff. Now you may think that we're going to go, uh, Caden Live has a blue screen option. We could drag that down there and then you can choose a color here. You can also use an eyedropper like so, but, um, and then you also have to add a composite layer. So we'll add a little dissolve layer there and change it to composite and um, you know this isn't a very good example because you guys can't really see it that well right here uh, you'll notice the little video preview here is rather small uh, normally I'm working with two monitors here and if you do have two monitors if you double click on the video there it moves the uh, the, the video the monitor video to another screen uh, it makes it full screen. So if you have two monitors, realize that, double click that, and then you can double click on it and it will go back. Um, so that's very useful. Um, you can also you can also pull this window out. All of Caden Live's windows pop out and you can drag them and move them around wherever you want. Um, let's see if I get that back, there we go. But I'll make this a little bit bigger. It's hard to see probably in what you're watching here, but 
we're losing a lot of the flame, and we still have black around the edges. Uh, also, Caden Live doesn't seem to have any uh, feathering options. You can choose the, the variants in color, but there's no feathering options. Uh, maybe there is somewhere else that I'm unaware of. And uh, blue screening without feathering, to me, isn't very good. So hopefully they add that feature in. But we're not using this blue screen option. I'm just showing you if you are going to have a blue screen uh, or some other color you're cro cropping out, that might be an option. But when you're working with just a black background like this, what you're actually going to do is um, just screen. And so we have this composite layer here. Let's uh, change that to screen. And there we go. We have the flames there as they should be. They tend to come out a little bit lighter. Um, you can adjust the brightness and contrast of them, maybe get them back to their original oranges. But it looks fairly well. Um, now, I don't want the fire right there. So, I mean, if I wanted the fire right there, wherever the stock footage is, oops, that would be fine. But I actually want to have the fire over here because there's a clip of part of the video where I'm actually tossing pieces over. I don't know if it's in this short clip. But uh, I, if I want to move this flame over, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, search inside our effects list here for pan. And you can see we have a pan and zoom here not pan here which is the audio panning left and right pan and zoom for video drag that onto the video there and then click here make sure you're at the first keyframe and if you need the fire moving you can set different keyframes we're just gonna have one keyframe here at this point we can just drag the fire where we want it which right about there right about there yeah maybe a little bit lower I'm being picky doesn't really matter right there that looks good so now we have the fire over there. And actually, yeah, I do want it lower. <laughs> uh, let's see. Make sure I'm clicked on the video here. Oh, right. Make sure to move it, you have to be on a keyframe. So click back here to go to the first keyframe or the last keyframe that you have. There we go. So the fire's burning there. Now, there's no fire sound effect, obviously. I can record or download some fire sound effects and um, put them uh, put them in the audio track layer there uh, but let's um, I noticed just now that there we go we're like a frame or two different on our two videos here you can hit control and scroll to zoom in and out here or use this bar down here and just make sure that we don't have any extra frames there we go so at this point I can render xvid is what I like to do um, for YouTube 8,000 8, uh, for the byte rate is great you can go up to 12,000 and um, I'll just save this as firewood 2 and uh, I'll play at the end of this video so thank you for watching and I hope that you have a great day please visit filmsbychris.com that's Chris with the K and there should be a link in the description also check out the playlist for this uh, superimposing of fire videos I'm gonna do some uh, show you some other examples in other applications have a great day